Do you know that are three different shapes of rackets in Paddle? Probably you do, but today I'm gonna try to be a Mythbuster in Paddle. Do you think that a diamond racket has more power than a round racket? Pay attention to this video to understand how this shape affects your Paddle racket. Hello to all players, I'm Pablo and I welcome you to a new 4 set. Let's start from the beginning and that means understanding why Paddle rackets has different shapes. It's all because molds. Every Paddle racket is made using molds where the shape is already already there. It's the same process as a Christmas cookie. The cooker, or in this case the one in charge of making the racket, puts the fibers and the rubber inside a mold and then it goes directly to the oven. And actually it's also the same process that we can see in a tennis racket factory. So the racket will have the same shape than the mold. It's obvious, no? Subscribe to the channel if you want a video showing you the whole process of making a paddle racket. Once we know better how a paddle racket is made, let's start analyzing the pros and cons of every paddle racket shape. And let's start with the diamond shape. How can we identify those kind of rackets? We can see that the top part of the racket is almost straight like a diamond. Anyways, it's easier to see it if you look at the racket turned side out. If the top part of the racket is almost straight, that means that the racket has more surface there. The Wilson Vela V2 has 542 square centimeters of surface at the top, and later we will compare it with hybrid and round rackets. What happens when you have more surface in that area? That more weight will be located there. And if we have more weight because our racket has more surface at the top, the balance will be higher. So, as the balance is higher, we feel that the racket is far from our hand. That means that we are gonna lose agility while moving our racket. All this concept is easy, right? But do you remember what means the lever effect? When we move our racket up to down, as we have more weight at the top of it, the racket will tend to move faster. And when we move our racket up to down, in a smash. If we don't lose acceleration in our moves due to the high balance, our smash can be more powerful thanks to the lever effect. However, the sweet spot of diamond rackets is quite small. Because of that, plus the lack of agility, it's better to use diamond rackets if you play with short swings. One tip if you are thinking about buying a diamond racket is about the weight. I told you before that diamond rackets has most of the time a high balance. So we can compensate that by looking for a lighter racket. I mean, to compensate for the reduction of agility due to the high balance, we can play with a lighter racket. Besides that, super offensive pro players like Coelho or Tejo plays with a diamond racket. But on the other hand, non-super offensive players like Chingoto or Dineno use diamond racket as well. And you will understand why in a moment. But first, let's go now to talk about round rackets. How can we identify those kind of rackets? Always try to think about a circle. The ones that are more similar to a circle are round rackets. Or we can see if the top part of the racket has the same surface area as the part closer to the hand. Remember that the Wilson Vela V2 has 542 square centimeters surface at the top. In the case of the Pro Staff, which is round, it has 484 square centimeters. That is 11% less between both rackets. Having less surface at the top, the weight is equally distributed around the racket. With that, most of the times the balance will be lower compared to a diamond racket. So the agility of round rackets will be better than diamonds. Thinking again that the surface heating is distributed equally around the racket, the sweet spot is larger so you can do longer swings to impact the ball. Why do people often say that round rackets have less power than diamonds? When we do a smash, we hit the ball with the top part of the racket. But in a round racket, as we have less surface there, we are forced to hit the ball lower and that affects the angle we can get in our shot. And in a round racket, we also lose that lever effect I mentioned before. But as the weight is better distributed in a round racket, we can use a heavier racket that can increase our power without losing agility. Remember that the heavier the racket, the more power and control we will have. Pro players that use round rackets as you didn't expect it are Tapia or Momo Gonzalez. Those players look for agility to give more spin to the ball. Tapia's mass is one of the best, but it's not because of the speed he gives to the ball, but the spin. If you always try to give to the ball as much spin as possible, keep in mind the agility. And why not? Think about rackets with roughness to increase the time that the ball has contact with the racket and because of that can give more spin to the ball. 
Time for the third and last shape of rackets that is hybrid or teardrop. How can we identify those rackets? Look at the top of the racket and see how it's not completely rounded even though it's not straight as in a diamond racket. The easiest way is again to look at the racket turn side out. If the Wilson Vela V2 has 542 and the Pro Staff has 484 square centimeters, how many square centimeters has the top surface of the Wilson blade? 510. 6% less than a diamond racket. And it's pretty obvious that it's in the middle between the diamond and the round racket. The balance is located between both shapes and hybrid rackets have more agility than diamonds but less than rounds. The same happens with the sweet spot. We have the midpoint in hybrid rackets. If you used to play tennis, I think these are the rackets that better works for you. A tennis racket has a length of 70 centimeters and a weight of 300 grams. On the other hand, a paddle racket has a length of 45.5 centimeters and a weight approximately of 370. Playing with a super high balance paddle racket can give you the feeling of too much weight. And playing with a round racket can give you the feeling of using a super short racket. So most of my friends and the people that I know that used to play tennis use hybrid rackets. Besides this, hybrid rackets are the majority on the market. Balance, weight and sweet spots can vary a lot from one to another. Because of that, we should always try to test the racket before buying it and especially in hybrid rackets. But I have an important question for you. Would you try to maximize your strengths or minimize your weak points? The racket you choose should answer this question. If you are an offensive player with a really good smash but your weak point is your defense. Would you buy a super high balance racket? Think that we are amateur players so we need to be as much as complete as possible. So I will always try to minimize my weak points. Keep in mind also that we can customize our paddle rackets. I'm not talking about painting our rackets but to change the balance or the weight. Consider that in a paddle racket will be a weight limit that you can remove but there won't be a weight limit that you can add. Think about where you put or remove weight because that will be affect the balance of the racket. If you remove the protector, the balance will drop. If you remove overgrips, the balance will go up. For example, Juan Lebron himself removes the standard grip that comes with the racket, puts one and a half overgrip and also adds some lead at the top of his racket to make it more high balance. But Sanjo Gutierrez does the opposite. He removes the racket protector and the original grip to reduce the balance and have a more easy to move racket. Do you have any doubt? Leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching the video and see you in the next one. Bye!